Okay, welcome to the final video of this lecture. So at the end of the last video, we had drawn this diagram which depicts what happens to this feedback between daisies and surface temperature under an increase in luminosity represented by an upward translation of the relationship from daisy coverage to surface temperature. And what we see is that the increase in the equilibrium uh, temperature of the planet ends up being pretty small as a result of the feedback between daisies and surface temperature. And that this TEQ value is small relative to the increase in temperature that would be present if there was no feedback between daisies and surface temperature. So let me just go ahead for completion or, or for completeness and write a definition of what delta TEQ is. And this is the change in equilibrium temperature of the planet with feedback between daisies and temperature. So an important note here is that P1 prime is slightly hotter, where there's an emphasis on slightly, than P1, but less than delta T for the no feedback condition. So we could break this down um, in, in some words. What happens if we crank up the sun's luminosity? Well, the daisy cover response to surface temperature, the parabola is the same because daisies only care about temperature, not about the sun's luminosity. But the surface temperature response to daisy coverage changes. In other words, because there's more solar radiation coming to the surface of the Earth, the same amount of daisy coverage is associated with a higher temperature. So that's why we have this upward translation of that of that line. So um, as the sun's luminosity increases, the surface temperature uh, response to daisy coverage shifts. The equilibrium points shift to P1 prime and P2 prime. P1 prime is still stable, um, but it's, it ends up being a little less stable than before. And let's think about what happens now if we further increase the sun's luminosity. So let's go ahead and draw these lines. Um, so here again is the coupling from surface temperature to daisy coverage, our familiar parabola. Um, here is our original coupling from uh, daisy coverage to surface temperature with P1 and P2. Here is the increase, or the, the coupling from daisy coverage to surface temperature under the increase in luminosity. So now we have P1 prime and P2 prime. And so let's continue to increase luminosity. And the effect that that should have is to continue to translate this line upward. And let's consider the case where, oops, let's consider the case where the line gets translated up to this point. Okay, so now it's intersecting the parabola at one point. And I'll call this point P1 double prime. So now, let's try to figure out whether P1 double prime is stable or unstable. And I think the easiest way to do this is just the, the intuitive method. Um, so at P1 double prime, uh, let's perturb the system to slightly higher values of temperature. So we're over here. 
conditions are less suitable for the growth of daisies. So da daisy coverage declines. Uh, as daisy coverage declines, the planet becomes darker and absorbs more solar energy and becomes warmer. So we move in this direction away from the equilibrium. And so that means we lose our stable equilibrium. Um, so we lose the stable equilibrium. P1 double prime is unstable. And so the planet becomes much hotter than it was before. OK, we could actually uh, generate a, a pretty neat plot that shows this process. Let me just go ahead and do that here. Um, so I've got two axes. Our x-axis here is, is going to represent luminosity. And our y-axis is going to represent the equilibrium value of, of temperature on this particular planet. So what we see, um, just by looking at what happens as we go from P1 to P1 prime, is we see, with increasing luminosity, a slight increase in the equilibrium value of temperature on this planet. So let's just draw that kind of like this. So we have a slight increase, but then at the point P1 double prime, um, that's an unstable equilibrium, and so we increase in the equilibrium value of temperature at a very rapid rate. Okay, so this is a planet with feedback. Let's contrast this to a planet with no feedback, or you could just think of this as a planet with no daisies. Um, and in that particular case, as you increase luminosity, the equilibrium value of temperature is going to increase uh, linearly. So you end up getting a line that looks like this. So this would be um, with no feedback. And you'll have a chance to work with more plots like this in our class, um, in, in the lecture period and in your lab section dealing with feedbacks in Daisy World. So an important point here, just to summarize, is that the stable equilibrium surface temperature increases as the sun's luminosity increases, but the rate of increase would be a lot more if there was no Daisy to surface temperature feedback. And what you see from the previous graph is that there is strong nonlinearity, this threshold um, in the equilibrium temperature that arises once you um, reach a certain value of luminosity. So as, as the sun reaches a certain age, uh, the, the temperature of the planet would increase very rapidly to approach this situation, um, this, this condition of, um, that's equivalent to, to the equilibrium temperature in a planet with no feedback. So what can we learn from Daisy World that applies to Earth systems? Well, first of all, a planetary system is not passive. Uh, there are all sorts of feedback loops. We went through several examples today, and we'll continue to go through examples for the rest of the semester. Uh, the planetary system responds to both positive and negative feedback loops. Uh, negative feedback loops counter external forcing. Positive feedback loops magnify the forcing and are destabilizing. But a system with feedbacks can be self-regulating, and over a certain range of luminosities, Daisy World is self-regulating. It maintains a relatively constant temperature. Um, it might appear that the planet is intelligent or, uh, or, or somehow governed, uh, but it has nothing to do with foresight. Uh, this regulation simply arises as a consequence of the rules governing the couplings between the state variables. And this forms the basis of the Gaia hypothesis by James Lovelock, which is basically that life itself is responsible for maintaining the stability of Earth's climate, um, and possibly now the growing instability of Earth's climate. So that's something to, to keep thinking about through the rest of the semester. 
It's important to note that the Earth system might be self-regulating. There are evidence for neg there is evidence for negative feedbacks in long-term climate stability, but there is also evidence for some positive feedbacks and switches between equilibrium states. And today we talked about a few negative and positive feedbacks relevant to Earth systems. So that brings us to the end of, of this lecture. Next time we'll start talking about planetary energy balances, and another foundational concept for the rest of this course. Uh, the reading that I want you to do to prepare for the next lecture is pages 18 to 22 in the textbook. Um, but even more than that, really focus uh, your study on this website. Uh, there's a, a hyperlink on B courses that you could just click on. Uh, there are several different modules associated with this website. So I want you to read the main page and also the first module, which is how much energy from a sun reaches the planets. Uh, for the following lecture, Planetary Energy Balance 2, you'll be looking at the other modules. Uh, so with that, I, I leave you to uh, your studies, and I hope uh, you enjoy the, the activities that you do in class on Tuesday. Thanks.